Welcome to the Rock Church and World Outreach Center. We pray that this message will strengthen and encourage you. Now, here's a message from Pastor Jim Cobray. How about standing on your feet and let's go before the Lord. <laughs> Father, we just come to you in the name of Jesus, giving you all the praise, all the glory, all the honor. How good it is to be in the house of the Lord. Now, Lord, I have an assignment that you gave me. And I have less than 30 minutes to deliver this, Lord. Can you help me do that? Help me to do it. Stay on track. Stay precise. Father, I give you all the praise, give you all the glory, give you all the honor. We bless all the churches in the Inland Empire that are preaching and hearing the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Bless our Baptist brothers, Lutherans, Methodists, Episcopalian, Charismatics, Pentecostals. Thank you for Calvary chapels and Harvest Oak Valley and Oasis and Inland Christian Center, the well, the way, Lord, Emmanuel, Ecclesia. We thank you, God, for Trinity. We give you the praise and glory for our Adventist brothers and sisters, Catholic brothers and sisters, Lord. Oh, Lord, we at no time see ourselves as better than them. We are, 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 are wise enough to know, Lord, that anything that ever gets done is going to get done because you're in the house and you're present. And we give you the praise, give you the glory. As you bless them, bless us. Jesus, mighty name with a great big shout, we all say, Amen. Amen. Recently, Debbie and I have been talking about a subject. I actually wanted to minister a different subject that was on my heart. And then the Holy Spirit came and brought a, a subject just this morning that uh, I had ministered many times before, but... It's been the conversation of Deborah and I lately, and it's really an interesting message. Many times you may have heard something similar to this, but I, I don't know. This is one of those messages I think you could hear 50 times and still not get it or forget it and not do it. And this is called Peace Beyond Logic. I don't know about you, but if you ever stopped and thought about what the world would be like, the Prince of Peace was really first and foremost in people's lives. Jesus, who is the peace giver that comes and gives all of us freely something that we lost at the garden, which was peace. Settling us down in our souls and settling us down in our heart where nothing ever really bothered us at all because we're just full of a, a, a commodity, if you will, of God, which is peace. The world will always give you tribulation. Jesus said you'll have it in the world. But he makes this statement, be of good cheer for I have overcome the world. And we hear that and we sing that and we praise that and we preach that. But I find in Christendom, that means among Christians that we still know it and can say it, but we don't live it. And very few Christians absolutely who have the ability to walk in the depth of peace, very few ever really live in that world of peace. And I wonder how much could be accomplished if we were walking in the depth of the peace that God really gives to us instead of it. I know some of you stay awake in the middle of the night because you're worried, concerned, have anxiety about things in life and how you're going to make it in your finances. Now you're going to pay for the house and where you're going to take care of the car and how you're going to buy tires and how you're going to feed your kids and you're worried and you're frustrated on the inside and you know it. This house is full of people that are without peace but yet say they have God. It's wrong for us to be Christians and not live in a world of an incredible peace that goes literally beyond the logic of man. Logic of man says this about peace. I, I'm frustrated. I'm, I, 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 I'm uptight. I don't like what they did. I don't like what they said. I don't like what's happening in my life. And I don't know how to change it. And I don't know how I'm going to make it. And they, even though they're Christians, they find themselves in a place of constantly being you know, beat up by the world and beat up by their own thoughts and their own ideologies and philosophies of life instead of going to where we need to go and get that peace every time and every moment, even if it's every part of the day to go grab that peace and hold on to it and let the peace of God reign in our lives. 
We don't do that as Christians. We talk about peace. We live somewhat in peace, but not the depth of peace. Can you imagine what would happen in the Ukraine right now if peace was there? Can you imagine all over the world in South America and Central America? And can you imagine the countries in the Middle East if the real peace was there, what this place would be like? Can you imagine what a Christian's witness would be like if nothing ever upset them, nothing ever really bothered? And that's that peace that surpasses all understanding. The Philippians 4 chapter, verse number 7 says, And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding. And I, I love that. I should have highlighted that, John. The peace of God, which, these words, which surpasses all understanding. In other words, it's going to go beyond your logic. It's going to go beyond what you can possibly think. And you know, can I just say this to all of us that are in here? We need it to go beyond that. If it only went to our logic and what we think, we'd be a mess because we're only going to go so far with it. But here it says, which surpasses, not some understanding, surpasses, and it's far beyond anything we can ever imagine. And that's the settling of your soul. That's the absolute peace as you approach every moment of every day. Knowing something. Acting in something. Doing what God would have you and I to do. Without it, my friends, we live as Christians. And we're frustrated through our whole life. And we don't know why and what it's going to take. We're always looking for something else other than God. Let me just make a statement to you. Can I say this? You were never designed by God. You've got to hear it. I'm going to say it again. You were never, and neither was I, ever designed by God to attain peace from any other source other than God. And yet we look everywhere. If, if we only had money, if we only had a better job, if we only had you know, a better retirement, if we only had uh, you know, a, an increase in salary, if we only had this person love us or that person stay with us, if we only had a better house, if we only had a better car, if we only had better children, if we only had, I mean, it goes on and on and on and on and on. And we're always, listen to this, Never experiencing the understanding and depth and walk that is available to us, life that is available to us, in the peace that God gives us. And for the reason is this, because in our natural minds, we're always looking somewhere else. Every single one of us, including pastor, always looking somewhere else to attain deeply what I'm looking for and what you're looking for. And that's a shame. And so I thought this, you know, this is kind of a fun thing. It's called Peace Beyond Logic, this part one. Part two is next week, which Pastor Dan's going to preach. He doesn't know it yet. <laughs> this thought I'd tell you, Pastor Dan. If you say, gee, I think you ought to finish it, I'll be happy to. And I thought it would be interesting tonight if we did some things. If we looked at the reasons, and I love this. How to live in peace in a troubled world. Or, let me put it like this, why Christians have no peace. Because if I can figure out why Christians have no peace, I can see myself somewhere in there doing that. Then hopefully, because I acknowledge that, I'll be able to change that. Wait a minute, did you get that? In other words, because I understand why it is that Christians don't have peace, and if I'm there, then I can see myself there, and I can acknowledge that. That's where I am. That's what I do. That's what happened to me. Then I can change this because now I see myself as somebody who is doing the wrong thing, trying to get the right results that are offered to me by God, and yet for some reason I never have them. Some reason. Can you imagine, for an example, if we were at peace with our lives what our eating habits would be like. Oh, I got a moan there. <laughs> you know what I mean? How many are like Pastor Jim that sometimes will eat even when you're not hungry just because food is the, remember we threw out the cigarettes and we took in the ice cream. <laughs> Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Huh? The cigarette was the, I'm at peace. The drag in the morning. Does anybody know that? Does anybody remember that? Some of you still smell like you remember. <laughs> 
And, and it was that, that, that first morning drag that it was like a, 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 a release of pressure until your first cough. <laughs> and the release of the first smell. No, we won't go there. And uh, so it was like that really. And then all of a sudden, what we do, we substitute. Oh, we're Christians. We don't smoke anymore. But we are 50 pounds overweight, including me. Why? Because I eat when I'm not at peace. So even my diet is controlled by whether or not I'm in peace. How about making business decisions? In other words, if I'm frustrated about something, I won't make the business decision I may need to make because I'm really not at peace about it. So I don't make it, so therefore I never get the benefit back to it. Oh my goodness. How about because there, there, there is such turmoil going on on the inside and uncertainty on the inside because there's lack of peace that we never make the decisions that we're supposed to make or live the life we're supposed to live. So we live an inferior life even though we're Christians all because we ignore what it is to bring peace every moment into our life. I'm going to share that with you over the next couple of weeks. Me or Pastor Dan or Pastor Luke. Or Pastor Joel. <laughs> or maybe Pastor Henny. Somebody's going to share it with you. <laughs> I already have it. All I have to do is give it to them. But here's the deal. So I'm going to tonight go from the negative. We're going to learn what Christians, why Christians have no peace. Not, you know, we have a certain measure of peace. We all do. But it's not the peace that stops us from going and doing what we need to stop doing and going to where we need to go. And that's where the examination comes in. Number one, <clears throat> I'm going to stay on this. Now, here it is. Number one, I'm going to give you four things tonight I think you're going to find fascinating. Why Christians have no peace. Number one, fail to evaluate, and then I'm going to put dot, dot, dot properly. You're going to evaluate life one way or the other. There's nobody can get away from it. You're going to look at things, come to a determination, come to a place where you make a decision based on the data that you have, and you're going to go forward in something. Everybody evaluates everything that you're going to do, and how you evaluate things, proper or improper, will determine what you're going to do. So when I make the statement, failure to evaluate, what I'm really making a statement of saying is that we are trying to get away from something in order to have peace. Let me give you an illustration. Guy comes to me and says, man, if I could just get my wife to be on my side, my whole house would be at peace. That's absolutely wrong. If I could just get more money, I would be at peace. Absolutely wrong. If I could just, uh, you know, do this or do that, and uh, if I could just get away from my boss and get a new job or a promotion or something, I would have peace every weekend and I could have, you know, better time. Absolutely wrong. Here's the improper evaluation is that we always trying to get away from something in order to have peace on the inside. Getting away from something will never bring peace to your life until you realize that peace comes from God. And that God is the source of peace. If God gives you peace because your bills are paid, you may have momentary peace, but it won't last. Now stop thinking about it just for a moment. All the millionaires that you've known over the years that have killed themselves with drug overdoses and drug mixtures and all that. I mean, you can just stop thinking about the, 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 we just recently had Academy Awards. I mean, you stop thinking about the people that recently in the last year or two that have died. 
I mean, great actors had guy that was doing that Batman thing. I forgot his name, Ledger or Keith or whatever. And then, and, and then how about Whitney Houston? I mean, come on, is there anybody with more talent than her? Or is there anybody who could sing better, had more money, had it all together than her? I tell you what, would you like me to prove that to you by singing you a song right now? <laughs> So the point being is this, how in the world? I mean, you stop thinking about this Hoffman guy. I, I mean, you stop thinking about Michael Jackson. I mean, come on. None of us can do what the guy did. And yet with all of his talent, all of his gifting, all of the open doors, all of the money that they had. I mean, I just mentioned a few. This goes all the way back. You can go all the way back to Marilyn Monroe in my lifetime. And, and, and you can go all the way back and over the years, one after another, after another, after another, what, have all killed themselves because they were looking for something to find peace in other than the source of peace. It's called improper evaluation. And we constantly are looking in the wrong place for the, for the, and trying to get the wrong thing out of the wrong place. Listen to the scripture. It's kind of a fun little scripture, but let's take a look at it. It's sort of fun, I guess you might want to say. In Psalms 55, verse number 6. In Psalms 55, verse 6, it says, So I said, Oh, that I had wings like a dove. I would fly away and be at rest. Can I tell you something? You cannot fly away. Has anybody ever had a problem you want to get away from? You know, if you thought to yourself, uh, if I get away from the problem, uh, and, and you know what we do? We do, we get away from the problem and we might find a little bit of rest. Anybody ever notice when you get back, you got the same problem to face? In other words, the problem doesn't go away. Uh, oh, if I could just fly away and then my, listen to this, if I fly away and I'll be at rest, you will never be able to rest flying away from the problem because the problem will always be there. And only way you'll ever find the rest in your soul that you need is to attach yourself to the things of God. So improper evaluation, you'll find yourself constantly looking for something and trying to find something to bring something that is offered to you freely by Jesus. And all you have to do every single day is tap into that. Stop thinking about it for a moment. Just simply tap into it. But yet we're all consumed, we're all involved, we're all there about all this stuff that we do trying to get to a place that if we accomplish those things, we'll be at peace. And here's the whole world out there that doesn't know God that's accomplishing better things than we'll ever accomplish, and they're dying. And here we are with the answer, and we're not properly evaluating the answer. And we're doing something else. We're looking somewhere else. I just want to get away and find peace. Can I tell you something? You can get away all you want. You'll never find the peace you're looking for because the peace you need is not in a way. It's within. Is it by this? <laughs> the second thing that's kind of fun, why Christians have no peace, I like this, is there's a failure to hear. I can't tell you how many people right now in this room are hearing my voice but don't hear my voice. Let me say it again. It's kind of fun. Stop thinking. About it. I can't even tell you, but there's a bunch of you right now that are hearing my voice that are not hearing my voice. You're half asleep. I can't tell you how many times I'm preaching the gospel and there's two or three people with their head back and their mouth wide open on the chair. <laughs> And I just want to run down there and put my fist right down their throat, but, you know, I, I got saved. You know, I, I wouldn't, wouldn't it be great, you know, I mean, I'd like to get maybe some soap or something and pour it down their throat or something, you know. I mean, I can't tell you what it's like. And, you know, I know they're not, they're not going on with God. They hear the sound of the voice, but they don't get what's being said. And, and, and can I just say this to you? Until you get what's being said, you can hear all the loud voice that you want. 
And you feel good about yourself for coming into church because let me tell you something, it's not just about uh, 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 coming to church that you get anything from God. It's about when you hear and you do. But before you do, you gotta do something. You gotta, you gotta hear. And so many people do not hear even though they're in the presence of God. Can I just say something? Tonight was a perfect example And for most of you, you never saw anything like that in your life. You never saw anything like that in your life. Of somebody who could hear what God wanted. And you saw the numbers get saved. And then you saw more get saved. And then out of the blue, where is that five coming from? And there wasn't six, there was five. One came with somebody. And, 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 And it's like... Wait a minute, if God can clearly talk to me this way, cannot God talk to you about your home, your family, your future, your finances, dreams and visions and hopes and fulfillment and everything about your children, about your marriage, about your jobs? Could God give you the insight on how to build your business like Bill Gates look out? Because the one who created the heavens and the earth spoke to you, but it doesn't do any good unless you can hear. And I love the scripture. Listen to what the scripture says. It's really a fascinating verse. I'm going to take you. You're already uh, there in Psalms in the Old Testament. Let's go to Isaiah 28. In Isaiah 28, and verse number 12. Fascinating, fascinating verse. It says, to whom he said, this is a rest with which you can cause the weary to rest. Now he's talking about rest, being at peace. And this is the refreshing. And then it comes along with this last part of the statement. Yet they would not hear. They know who God is. They'll come into the house and sing along with everybody else, clap the rhythm with everybody else. But when the things of God that are important for you to hear, listen to this, this is the first step to doing anything is to hear something. Your mind is wandering off somewhere, daydreaming. And you really don't hear, you're half asleep. I can't tell you how many people, even I look over the audience right now. And here's the thing about this, if you're not hearing what God would have you to do, then you'll never do what God would want you to do and you never end up blessed. And you're always frustrated. So a lot of times this rest is available like this verse and I want them to have rest. And here's the solution for rest. Here's the peace that you've been looking for. Here's what you want, but they would not hear. We're talking about a wonderful little subject. Why Christians do not have peace. Number three, I found it. Fascinating because number three is really cool. I love this one. Failure to remember. In other words, you'll do it for a day, but forget tomorrow. I'll grab a hold of that piece that I walked in today, but tomorrow when the pressure come on me, I'll go right back to my old ways. And we're all there. We all constantly do something. I found out about people is that people forget all the time. And you'll find that we all are in this. Throughout the history of mankind, we forget. We do not remember the day that God touched us. We don't remember what God did in our midst. We don't remember what God said. We don't remember these things. And then all of a sudden, someone preaches a message like this and tomorrow you're like, whoo, I've got the peace of God. This is a great day. I've got the joy of the Lord again, which is my strength. I'm going on with God. And then here comes Saturday. And you forgot. This is not something you can forget. It is a lifestyle you must live day in and day out. Listen to me. For some of you, because of the pressure that's on you, you have to remember this every single day, a dozen times, two dozen times a day. 
And you need to take your medicine. And the gospel is the best medicine for you to take. And so what we do is we forget this. And we get in a routine and then we go right back to where we were before. You're having to take control of these things. See, you can hear this and forget. And you don't remember. You end up not doing what you're supposed to be doing. And that's why it's important for us not only to hear, but to remember. In other words, I find that what I practice, I become good at. Every day. If I practice something, I, I, I do it pretty well. If I don't practice it and then I try to do it, man, I'm a mess. And I get frustrated with myself because I'm doing it so bad. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? But if I practice, I'm pretty good. And so it's the same principle with peace. You've got to practice peace every hour of every day. Some people can only have to practice it a couple times a day because they've got it under control. That's not a big deal to them. Other people have to practice peace every hour. And some of you I'm talking to in here, you know what I'm talking about. You can't even let 20 minutes go by without practicing peace. And you're going to have to practice living in the peace that God provides for you because if you don't, guess what's going to happen? You're going to forget, go right back, and then you're going to bellyache to God and say, why am I like this? Why am I stressed out? Why am I on the edge? Why am I feeling like I'm feeling? Why am I feel like my whole life is falling apart? Why am I losing everything? And it's really not anything. You're, you're, you're just, remember, you have to learn to practice this. Debbie and I uh, heard a guy preach a few years ago at our church from South Africa. Um... What was his name? Alan. Alan Platt. Good guy. Alan's been in our church here from South Africa. And he made a statement that Debbie and I have always remembered. He was talking about getting angry. You know, when you get angry, you lose your peace. Anybody know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Anybody ever been angry? It's not like you're, I'm at peace. Let me punch you in the face. No, it's like, uh, you know, just angry, you know. And he said, it's an interesting thing about anger. He said, if somebody spits on me, they make me wet. But the anger I have doesn't come from the spit, it comes from me. In other words, it's my reaction to what that person did that person didn't make me angry. I made myself and allowed myself to be angry. How did that happen? Because you forgot what to do. So he made me wet, but I made myself angry. Does anybody get that? But I made myself angry. We forget all the time. Listen to this. Psalms 116.7 says this. Return to your rest, O my soul. For the Lord has dealt bountifully. Return. You can't return to something unless you have something. See, return means I had it and I've gone back to it. And that's what this is all about. Return to your rest. Oh, so in other words, I've got to get back there all the time. I can't forget it and move past it. Does anybody listen? Yeah. We're talking about why people have no peace. Why Christians have no peace. Failure to evaluate, failure to hear, failure to remember. Last one, failure, if you're gonna hear, you gotta act. Failure to act. I have gotta put this to work. I cannot hear it tonight and expect to have any peace whatsoever for any more than 24 hours. I gotta act on it. In other words, you can't just be a hearer, you must be a what? Doer. And a lot of times we'll be great hearers, we can preach it, we can quote it, but we don't do it. And the peace that we're to act on is something that demands us to get in to the right place and draw the peace from God, not from what the situation is or the people that are around us. In fact, Jesus makes a statement in Matthew, the 11th chapter, verse 28, pop it up on the overhead, and it says it like this, come to me all you that labor and are heavy laden and I, I will give you, notice these words, come to me. 
and I will give you rest. Verse number 29 says, like, take. So he says, come and take. If you don't act on it, it isn't going to work. Come and take. If you don't act on it, it isn't going to work. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart and will find rest in your souls. Verse number 30. And it says, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. My goodness, my friends, without this, nothing really works in life. So there's four little things why Christians fail when it comes to peace. Number one, failure to evaluate. Really, what's right, what we're doing, what this is all about. Number two, failure to hear. We listen, but we don't hear and get it down inside of us. Failure to remember. This is an every hour thing that God's asking us to do. Every hour. To get in this, make sure that we work this, which brings us to number four, which is failure to act. My goodness. Why Christians have no peace. Failure to act. So tonight, it's just kind of prompting you. How far could you go with your marriage? How far could you go with your home? How far could you go with your finances? How far could you go with life? How far could you go with your business? How far could you go with your every area of your life? If you literally did something, we're walking every day in the depth of his peace. He says, I'll give you peace that's beyond your logic, beyond your understanding, beyond anything you can possibly ever imagine. When somebody offends you instead of getting angry, you live in peace. Instead of reacting and getting even, you live in peace. It's available to all of us that are called Christians. But we can't just preach it and expect everybody to get it. We have to practice it every single day. If God spoke to you today, give him a great big praise the Lord. We do that part two next week. I, I know there's some of you that are in here tonight. It's just your time. To get right with God. And the very presence of the Holy Spirit is in this house right now. And you know it. And you felt it. And it's just time now, not later. This is your day of salvation. This is a day when you finally turn the corner on that road to eternity by giving God all of your heart and giving God all of your life. Before we go another moment in this place, with such a presence, God wants to do two things. Number one, he wants to get people who are not right with him, right with him. And number two, he wants to get those that need healing, healed. Where there's the Holy Spirit, there's the power of God. Where there's the Holy Spirit, then he's here right now. He wants to do something. Not us do something, he does something. And I don't know who you are, but you've been running from God long enough. You have doubted and questioned God long enough. You have said in the wee hours of the night, where are you, God? I'm not even sure I believe in you. But tonight you felt him. And tonight is your night of salvation. And I know that you know that's you that I'm speaking to. And it's time now, before anything else, to get right with God. And I want you to get a hold of your coat and your purse and your sweater. Get a hold of your Bible if you brought one. Bring a friend if you need to bring a friend. And I want you to get out of your seat and I want you to meet me right here in front. I don't have to do any more than that. Jesus made a statement. He said these words, you must be born again. And he made that statement to a guy that was better in his lifestyle than all of us. The guy was a keeper of the law. Memorized the scripture and quoted the scripture, debated the scripture. This guy was the head of his church, the synagogue. This guy wore the priestly robes and was a leader in his community. 
sang the scripture. Can you imagine that? And yet Jesus makes a statement to him. It's not about those stuff that you've been doing. It's about your heart. And when he makes this statement, you must be born again. He's really saying, will you from your heart give God all of your heart and all of your life? Tonight, I'm just going to have them sing a soft song. And I don't know who you are. And I know you don't have the guts for this. But you know you need to. So get past your own feelings. Get your stuff. Every one of you that need to get right with God tonight, get out of your seat. Bring your friend. If you're sitting next to somebody, you need some support, just say, come on, go with me. I need to go. And get out of your seat. All from the whole auditorium, but even the family room. Bring your children. And just get in the aisle and just walk forward. Because when you walk forward tonight, here's what you're saying. I'm leaving death, hell, and sin behind. I'm leaving a frustrated life behind, not knowing how to make things work. And I'm going forward with Jesus tonight. The devil can go jump in the lake. I'm not jumping in with him. I'm going to go to heaven. And if that's you and you want that, you're going to have to extend yourself now. Besides just go into the length of the song, get past the song, get into the spirit, and you come right now. As they sing this song, you come right now. Don't wait another moment. You are here tonight, and you know it. This is a divine appointment you have with God. You come. Come on. You come. Won't you come? Come on. Just There's a bunch of as you. Are. There's like 30 of you in this place. Oh, and here. The spirit call Don't clap Won't you come Just as Just as you are Yep, they're coming You just come, come Time, to come Time to come home Time to come home This Is the dividing come moment In eternity for you forever. This is it This is the change in eternity for you. This moment. in my heart, God, I'm standing before the people. They're not moving. Look how many people have already come. 
And yet God knows who you are and knows there's not one, not two, not three. Maybe, maybe that would work, but 10? But 10 more? Whoever you are, God knows who you are and you need to come. Nobody clap. Whoever you 10 are, you need to get out of your seat and come. Now there's nine more. Nine more. somebody and come. Now there's eight. Now there's seven. From the family rooms, you need to come. Now there's six. Now there's five. Now there's four. Now there's three, and there's the three. That's amazing. The Bible says that no one comes to the Lord except by the Holy Spirit. And if we as a church don't allow the Spirit of God to do what he needs to do, we just come in and do our routine and do our traditions and our rituals, how much will we miss of the very power of God? Thank God you guys have come. Thank God you've come. Today is your day of salvation. Today is a turning point in your future. Today you're turning that corner in eternity. This is my friend, yours too, Pastor Joel. Joel, way big at this side over here. I want you all to make a left turn and follow Pastor Joel right over there, would you please? Hey, you just heard that altar call. You just wanted to give God all of your heart and all of your life. Now let me lead you simply in a prayer of inviting Jesus Christ into your heart as your Lord and Savior. In fact, why don't you just go ahead and listen to me and go ahead and close your eyes and just repeat these words after me. I'll go slow. You repeat them. Say these words. Say, Father God, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I believe that Jesus Christ is your only begotten Son and that you sent him for me and that he died for me on that cross at Calvary. I believe that his blood washes away my sins, that I am now a new creature in Christ Jesus. And I thank you, Lord. I receive you now and forever as my Lord and as my Savior. I'm going to turn from sin, and I'm going to turn with all of my heart and all of my life to you, Jesus, as my Lord and as my Savior. Let it be known in heaven as well as upon the earth that I am born again. I'm a child of God that I'm saved and I'm headed for heaven and denying my presence in hell. Thank you, Jesus. I'm alive forevermore. Love you so much. God bless you guys. Everybody just say amen and receive Christ as your Lord and Savior. So talk to you later. God bless you. Thank you for listening to the Rock Church and World Outreach Center. If this message spoke to you, please share it with us. We'd love to hear from you. You can find more information at www.rockchurch.com.